use it to check multiple items. When you ask somebody what kind of food they like, they might check Chinese or Italian, or they might check both. The checkbox gives people options to check as many as they want. On the next page, we first have the entry box. If you have ever filled out a form online or did a search on Google, this is what you type into. The frame widget is an organizer that organizes all your widgets together. If you have a couple of buttons, you might want to organize them into groups. Let me explain this graphically. In the window, you will create a frame. And inside the frame, you can create buttons. This way, by using a frame, you make your program look more organized. And it looks nicer this way. Let's check out the code for this so it's easier to understand. Remember how we normally put the button inside the main window root? Instead of putting the button inside the window, we put them inside the frame. As a result, the button will appear inside the frame. Let's run the program and see what happens. See how the buttons are organized into the frame? The frame widget allows you to make programs look nicer. Okay. Let's go back to the appendix. The next widget we have is the label widget. This is pretty easy to understand. You create a label with the label command. Once you have created the label, you can control the font, the color of the font, and what you want to say. The next widget is the list box. We created this in our first program. It is used to list a bunch of items together you can add items, remove items, and click on the items. We'll go over how to do them in detail later. We all have seen the mini bar before. How it is used is easy to understand. However, it's a little hard to create them. Don't worry about it if it doesn't make much sense right now. We'll go over this more in detail later. Now, go on to the last page. The first widget is the scale widget. You can use this as a tuner for radio or use it as a control for the volume. It's a pretty useful widget. The scroll bar is kind of confusing. The best way I have found so far is to create a frame. Once I have created the frame, I put the scroll bar and the text field inside the frame. And lastly, I link them together. Let's check out the code that does this. The idea is simple. You create a scroll bar. You create a text box. You make sure that they're inside the same frame. Notice that they both belong to the frame. Then you link them together. To link the text box to the scroll bar, you should use the Y scroll command. Notice how the name for the Y scroll command is the same as the scroll bar? Scroll me. Now we need to link the scroll bar to the text box using this command. You're configuring the scroll bar so that it will scroll the text. If you're really confused, it takes a while to understand this. Just copy what I have for now, and we'll go over it again later. The last widget is called a top level widget. This is basically another window. The first window you create, you will use the command TK. But the window after the first one could be created using the top level widget. The only thing I want to comment about this widget is the geometry. The geometry controls the size and the location of the windows. The first number controls the width of the window. The second number controls the height of the window. When you run your program, the last two numbers controls where the window pops up. The first number controls how far to the right the window should be, and the second number controls how far down the window should be. And we're done. Today, we talked more about how we can link functions together. We learned that you can use commands such as name equals to main so that we won't run out of people's programs when we use their functions. There are also a lot of professional functions that we can also use to speed up our programming. Depending on what library you import, 
you will have different capabilities. In the future, we will import libraries that will help us solve complicated math problems, as well as hacking into other people's computers. Not that you should be hacking into people's computers. We'll show you how to hack into your own computers. We mainly concentrated on the TK into library today. And we learned all the cool stuff that we can create with the library. I want to point out that even though we learned how to create them, we still don't know how to use them yet. In case you are wondering, I will cover them in the future lectures. For your homework, I want you to go ahead and try to create each and every one of the widgets that we went over today. Try to play with them and see how they react. You learn the most when you crash your computer. One more thing, please visit our sponsor at saeproject.org. The goal of the project is to provide a fun and a free education for everybody. So go check the website out. A lot more fun lectures will be posted at the website. For now, this is all the time we have. This is